It's the first Wednesday of the month, and that means it's time for a new Home Assistant release. Today, we'll be looking at the new features and updates in Home Assistant version 2023.4. So let's get started. So let's start out with new dialogues for alarm cover and fan entities. Covers, cover, see what I did there? Covers include all of the many variants of doors, windows, curtains, blinds, shutters, garage doors, all of that stuff. And in addition to that, you can control those all different ways. You can tilt, you can open and close, you can half close. And these new dialogues take care of a lot of that for you. So this one tells you how far down the blinds actually go. This one allows you to adjust the tilt of your blinds. And of course the garage door open or closed. And then the kitchen window open, closed with a couple of sliders or buttons here. The new dialogues actually understand what kind of device it is and will give you the option of how to control that device. Fans are also coming with a new dialog. And for those uh, fans, you have multiple speed settings. You'll get a dialog that looks like this all the way from off to high. If you have only on off, then you have a dialog that looks like this. And then for ceiling fans, if you have more than four speed settings, then you get a percentage slider. So you can slide this up and down and it gives you how much of a uh, speed that fan gets. And then alarm control panels have a new dialogue as well. So if we look at my alarm control panel over here, if I click on this, you'll see that the dialogue sits up here and this is currently armed in the home uh, state. If I wanna disarm it, it automatically pops up a keypad here versus having the keypad available and visible all the time when it's armed. So that's a really nice feature that they've added to that. So there's new features in the tile card as well. Fan speed and alarm mode. Both have the same look as the dialogues above. And this is actually a tile card here. So if I edit this tile card for the alarm, I will get an option for setting the alarm modes and I can choose which ones I wanna select on here and they will show up on the tile card. I don't have any fans to show you, but the same thing applies for the fans. You can actually go through here and select the different things that you want to show on that tile card. The speed um, will show buttons if there are four speeds or less. And in every other case, it will use the slider as I talked about before. If it's only turned on or off, it'll do this. So same as you see for the dialogues that I showed you above here, only it's on a tile card instead of the dialogue. And then of course the alarm does the same thing. You can set all these different features if your alarm system supports that. Now for you Power Home Assistant users, this section is for you. This is all about new templating stuff. The, new, the first part here are macros for your template. All of your new custom templates are stored in this custom templates folder. And there you can put things like this. For example, if you wanna create a piece of code or a template that answers the same thing over and over again, for different entities, you can do that here. And this is an example of getting the state of an entity, is it if it's on or not. And you would create this macro, and then you would call the macro with this code right here and say basically uh, import answer question, which is this macro right here. And the answer question would be light kitchen. So then it goes out and says, what's the status of the kitchen light? And if it's on, it will output this value right here. So you can play around with all of those macros. And there's some more templating features such as the new is hidden entity function. It can tell if a given entity has been marked hidden or not. For example, if you use this inside of your developer tools under templates, in this case, it will tell me all of the hidden entities in my kitchen uh, area. You can also get a list of areas just by adding that, adding that in here as a input to the template editor as well. And these are all my areas that I have defined in my Home Assistant instance. So you can play around with all of those. You can also do uh, break and continue in for loops if you use the for loops, and that's also there as well. And then finally, if you want to do something like has value, you can see if something has a value. For example, if you wanna list all entities from a certain room that have no state value, you can get that here. And we can do the same thing here just by pulling this into our developer tools and taking a look at that here. And I don't have a living room, anything in the living room that way. So let me just pick a different area. And these are all of my devices in that, or in my studio area that have no value. So that's all that's new in templating with this release. So next up, let's talk about databases. 
So as Home Assistant grows, so does all of the stuff that's stored in your database. So it's important that the database is optimized to make Home Assistant run as fast as possible and as efficiently as possible. So this release does some new things that fixes or optimizes the database. So just keep in mind, by the way, when you update the Home Assistant to this new version, that the database will take a little bit of time to update. So don't do anything in the database until it tells you that it's finished. You'll see an alert on your sidebar telling you that it's doing that work there. So some of the things that occur here, smaller, which means it's less disk usage, reduced disk IO, quicker startup, faster history graphs and logbooks, et cetera. And then um, again, as I said, it may take a while to complete the background data migration. So also Home Assistant will keep history when renaming an entity, but if you want to use that, uh, wait at least 24 hours before upgrading if you wanna rename an entity so that it can do all of its stuff in the background first. Let's get into new selector capabilities. Selectors are inputs for interface that drive things like the blueprints. This is a big thing for blueprints. The constant selector provides an optional input, returns a certain fixed value when enabled. So either you turn it on or you turn it off. So you can click this box here and it will be enabled. If you unclick it, then nothing returns. So those that make blueprints, this is very handy for you. Also, you can do filtering and it allows you to create a list of selectors um, instead of just a single one. So now you can select multiple different devices from this filter. So that's a neat feature in the blueprints or for use in blueprints in other areas as well. And finally, translating entities. Home Assistant has been working to add additional translation to all of its entities over the last few releases. This release finishes all of that. So it includes the entities' names, their attributes, translations, etc. They'll be visible in your dashboards, dialogues, automation editors. Everywhere that it basically displays an entity, it will be able to translate for you. Integrations have to be able to explicitly support those. So if they don't, and many of them do now, um, if they don't support it, then you won't have the translations, but reach out to your developer of your integration and let them know you want the translation to be there and see if they can get that done for you. I always like to go through the other noteworthy changes. There's support for locks to matter. The real link has gotten a lot of love this release as well. It provides button switch, siren select, number and light entities to all of the things um, that real link cameras and doorbells can do. So if you have a real link device, you should see a whole bunch more sensors and things to play with in there. So good job there. If you're a big Spotify user, you now can support podcasts or it now can support podcasts for, for listening to those through the Spotify integration. ESP Home now supports Bluetooth pairing of Bluetooth devices. And what else here? If you're running TP-Link Omada, which I will be doing in my new home soon, integration to support update entities is now there as well. If you play with the sun, it's hot. If you play with the sun, entity attributes are now available as sensors, and that makes it much easier to use, similar to how the moon uh, sensors and entities work. And as always, make sure you read the breaking changes. I've looked through a number of these that apply to my environment. Um, some of these things I obviously don't have, but some of them I do, and I don't see anything major that's gonna just completely break everything. But I always recommend that you read all of the breaking changes, because if you don't, and you re, re or update Home Assistant, you could run into something that will break. All right, so that's just a really quick overview of this latest release of Home Assistant 2023.4. Let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. And if you're not a subscriber and only 25% of you that watch my videos are actually subscribers, just take a moment, hit the subscribe button right down there. And then uh, also the bell icon so you get notified when I make new videos and you can get right on those and watch them. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.